go ahead and get started. It's still after 5.30. Um, first of all, thanks everybody for coming, especially on your own after work. Um, I think that it's uh, uh, kind of what we're trying to do as we make some changes and we're going through a lot. First of all, I have to, uh, Teresa, Cynthia, Sheila, thank you so much as we went through this process of talking about our health care and looking at some different options that we have to. We're going to hit this in really three parts tonight. That's how we're going to do it. Um, Elliot's here, so we're here from United Way. We'll talk about that, talk about the challenge that we're going to be involved in. Okay, from there. Uh, second, then Anthony Perez is from 44 North, who I think you'll be excited with the things he talks to you about as far as the change that we're going to do in our health care. Some of you have been um, involved in some of the other issues that we've had in the past, with especially third party administrators and things. And uh, I'm trying to give you guys a lot of a, a little sneak preview as a lot of the things that he'll bring to the table education-wise tonight to come with open mind. And then Amy Ball, I'm sorry, Amy, you can introduce. Yep, Paul Meyer. Yep. Paul Meyer. Matt Lott, we've been approached that if this is something that you guys want to look at, that I think it's the first time we've had the opportunity to actually bring them in, um, so you guys can get some information from them and, and make some decisions about some other types of insurance that you want to look at. So um, I think it'll be pretty informative tonight. Again, I wanted to make this mandatory at first, but then the reality is this this is your, these are your benefits. And so if you're interested enough, you should be here. So thank you for coming, especially on a 530 and on a, you know, on a after you've been working all day. So I'll let you go ahead and get started. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Um, I am Ellie Hall. I work for United Way. You guys have seen me over the years, so you know who I am. If you don't, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm all over the community, and I do lots of stuff, which is crazy. Um, I need a vacation. Can we make that happen? How about Thursday? <laughs> What's that? Thursday. Thursday. Don't worry. No, I'll be freaking washing dishes for 12 hours. So I don't call that a vacation. Anyway, um, we do a lot in this community, uh, not just this campaign. So in the summer, we do Stuff the Bus, which um, you know, get school supplies to uh, elementary school teachers. Right now, we're actually going through our educational mini grant process, so we're going to give mini grants out to elementary school teachers. We, we just did fill a Mayflower, which um, gave food to food pantries. Um, in the winter, we do picture this youth venture competition. Um, we do some pop-up giving, which Project Pause got some money um, last year, which was awesome. Um, literacy kits for first graders, we do uh, getting ready for kindergarten calendars, um, we do matching grants, and mainly what you know United Way that we do is the, our big grant allocations. Um, that's what most people know what United Way does. So we do a lot of things throughout the year. Um, but you know, here in our communities, we have these staggering statistics that I go over every year and every year, but it's really important that we, that we reiterate what's going on in our communities, that 23% of our households with children live in poverty here in Gratiot County. Another 23% live just above the poverty line in that ALICE group. ALICE stands for Asset Limited, Income Constrained, but Employed. And so almost 50% of us live paycheck to paycheck, right? Um, not knowing if something catastrophic happens in our life, the whole snowball effect of other things are gonna happen. So um, that's our fam that's our, our families, our friends, our neighbors, the people that ring us up at the store, the people that we sit next to at church. And so you know, what we're doing at United Way is, you know, working with agencies to try to help alleviate some of those, some of those things that are happening. Um, more than 52% of our third graders cannot read at a third grade level, 52%. Um, and that's, some people say, oh, that's because we have bad teachers. It has nothing to do with our teachers. It has to do with things that are happening outside of the school system that are in their lives. So think about this. We have over 600 homeless people in Gresham County. And you guys probably know that, right? You guys have to deal with that every day. You say, we don't, we don't see homeless people. Where are they? Live in the parks. I work at Wilcox. They come into our building. We have to call the police because sometimes we have to deal with them. They live in their cars. They're living uh, on the couches of their family members. Um, they have over 600. Can you believe that? And no homeless shelter. But the Hope House just got their 501c3, and we're hoping that they're going to open soon. So watch for that, because the Hope House is something that is giving us hope in this community. It's going to open soon, all right? We're going to have a homeless shelter. We're going to have hope for these people. So that's very important. So going back to these kids, you know, are they part of that, that number? Are they homeless? Do they have good sleep at night? 
Are they getting fed? Um, do they have trauma in their lives? Are they being abused? What's going on in the lives of these kids that they go to school the next day and they can't study and they can't learn? Where 52% of our kids aren't reading at the level that they're supposed to. Where 67% of our eighth graders can't do eighth grade math. That's in Gresham County. That's our future workforce. So we're working to try to help agencies that are working with kids in these areas of, of early childhood literacy, of youth development, and financial stability to try to help move the needle, okay? Um, last year we supported over 50, uh, 50 over 43 programs um, in our community uh, that focus in a lot of these areas. That's a lot, over about 35,000 people. I think it's more than that. It's a really common numbers. Um, and so there's a, there's a big chance that you've heard of a lot of these programs, you know, Child Advocacy, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, um, Gresham Emergency Housing, Project PAUSE was one of them, um, you know, Listening Ear, We Pay to Have 211 exist here in this community. Um, I, I could go on, the list is, is deep. Um, you know, but I'm not going to, I don't have a lot of time, but the most important thing that I want to get across is, you know, we cannot walk in other people's shoes. We all have our own story to tell. Um, but asking for help is a strength, not a weakness. And we need to remember that. So when people are asking for help, it's very important that we listen, right? And, and whether it's someone that is a friend of yours or a family member or someone that you work with or someone that you really don't want to listen to, you might be the person that they've chosen to talk to that day, and it's really important that we listen to them because they may need help, and you might be the person that they that they need that from. And whether it's just someone saying, hey, I can't pay my electricity bill, and I don't know who to call, and you may not have the answer for them, tell them to call 211 and put it on 211 because they will give that person the answer, okay? So that's the most important thing. Um, and sometimes all they need is just someone to to just talk to for a couple minutes. And that's really important that we are there here. Um, so, you know, as for United Way, we are a village. It takes a village to give back. Last year, you know, and we go around, we do these campaigns. And so whether, you know, it's Alma College, and it's Meyer and it's, it's Gar Tool, and it's Moorbark, and it's UPS, and we all come together in the city of Alma. And last year, we raised a million dollars, and we've never been able to do that before. So I thank you guys for being a part of that. Thank you so much. We're going to try to do it again this year. I don't know if it's possible, but we're going to work really hard and we'll do it. Um, and so, um, what I had, what, what you have here in front of you is just kind of a little a visual of what your gift provides. So, are you 26 pays? Okay. 26 pays. Um, so this is a visual of your 26 pay period um, bi-weekly that you get paid. Um, this is, this is just a visual of, for example, in the first one, a, a cost of a, a, like a king size candy bar or a, a bag of candy um, will provide one book per month for two children an entire year. This is the Imagination Library. You've probably heard of that program, right? They send books to kids in the mail. We are a heavy supporter of this program. We give them $20,000 a year um, to make this, to, to help them. They get uh, kids to sign up, or families with kids ages newborn to the day they turn five and they'll send them a book in the mail it's a, for free, but it ultimately costs about $26 a year. So we help support that program. Um, here at the library, we have an angel tree, uh, hoping to get more people to, to help sponsor those kids. Um, that's just kind of a, a visual of what your support would, would do. So if you, you know, did a, a $2 per pay period, that would support two kids right there, $52 a year. So, um, we do have an incentive, the Vader Gator. We have a better Vader Gator this year. So for 150, it's like amped up. It's like, it's a, it's a really good Vader Gator. So for a $150 donation, your name will get in to win this Vader Gator. For a $100 donation, we have a lawn tractor, which I guess is a lawnmower, but they call it a lawn tractor at Vader and Sons. Um, and so your name will get in for that. So, that's all I got. Well, and then I have something. Um, Elliot reached out, and I haven't received my response yet, but I'll go ahead and stick our, our neck scared. out. That's the, why. The, the city of, uh, she'd like to see if we'd like to get involved with something versus the city of Ithaca, who also is in the, in the program. So 
I, I'll accept that. I'll accept that on our behalf to make sure that, um, sorry, Brett, to make sure that we kick the snot out of some, you know, we're a much bigger town, and so we should be able to do that. So I would expect that we would take that very seriously. And as someone who's a board member of Child Advocacy and, and some of the other groups that we mentioned and talked about there, it does. It impacts this community. This doesn't go outside. You know, United Way impacts this community. And so I appreciate everything that they do. And she just touched on how much it actually affects our community. So I, I would be highly disappointed if we didn't handle the city doesn't go without one. <laughs> it's, it's not based on money raised, it's based on participation. People participate. People participate. That's it. So don't yeah. feel that, you know, it's not that you're going to give the big donation plus over the top. She only counts one. But everybody counts as one. So if we can get that there and, and take care of that. He doesn't know it yet, but I'll talk to Chris on Monday and meeting with him. So don't know by then yeah. that we're there. So. And I have the cards here. It's easy. You just fill them out. Um, and you will give them back to Teresa. She's your lady, right? She is our lady. Yeah. Yep. And is there a date where you need them back by? We have that set or the last weekend of December and the latest. Last week of December. So you've got. What's the date of the year again? Later. Get the marks in. Am I going to put one? Your name? <laughs> <laughs> I do it. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll have those. We'll get those out. So keep thinking of that. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yep. Do you have any questions? You guys don't have to get a hold of me. You're better probably if you can turn this top one off. Yeah, just for a second. Let's do that. Um, just leave a word for me. That's probably good. Just so you know, prior to Anthony getting involved in, in, in talking to you here, one of the things that we've really, that the committee that was sitting talking with and we had a number of different companies in to talk about um, doing our insurance brokerage and to really be involved with us. Uh, these guys stood out, bam, way over the top, I will tell you, with their presentation and, and their service level that they provide in comparison to where we've been. I don't want to show of hands because I know we've had a number of people when you talk about our health equity accounts and some of our different things with our third party providers that have been very, very difficult over the years. He'll talk about this, but one of the biggest things that, that, that really struck us in, in talking with 44 North was the fact that they are the third party provider. And I'll let him talk about that because those of you who've had any of those dealings will understand what I'm saying, how much easier it is to be able to call this company and have them take care of it. So I feel really good. We've made some calls. We did our homework on this one. We called around, asked other people who dealt with 44 North of, of how good a service they provide and the difference that they've made. And we had some employees here that work that have been involved in some other things. One of the other things that I will say, and it may not have gotten around yet, and I apologize, we should have gotten this out earlier. One of the changes that we are going to make this year, going into this plan year, is as you know in the past, we have not allowed spouses who had access to insurance somewhere else. We're going to put them back on our plan. It's up to you. Okay? So, without any further ado, I'll let Anthony get started. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, so it was a great honor to be a part of that process, to be selected to represent you guys and your families um, in the city of Alma. I take that very seriously. Um, having a family myself, I know how important benefits are with, for your family. Um, I'll tell a story about AFLAC in a little bit uh, this year in our family. But, um, you know, this is something we all take seriously. For most of you, besides your income, which is your largest asset, your home, which is probably your second largest asset, your benefits are generally the third largest asset you have. So this is a lot of money. It's an important part, and it's the, probably the number one thing that prevents you from ever having financial disaster in your life, okay? And um, we take that very seriously, that we get to work with you um, and be the company that helps you sort through that every day, because it's not easy. I'm not gonna say it's easy. Um, we can only do our part in this craziness called healthcare. In fact, I want to start off with a really quick video and see if you guys can maybe relate to this a little bit. At Humana, we know that improving healthcare for healthier, happier lives starts by listening. So we asked real people to speak candidly about certain words. What they said was honest and eye-opening. The word I'm seeing is health. And in my own words, health is happiness. Health is freedom. Health is life. It's very important, it's everything. 
After people spoke about help, we turned to another word. Care makes me think more of uh, love and compassion and warm hugs. <laughs> It's sort of like wrapping your arms around and protecting everything you're supposed to protect. Care is trust. Basically what I do all day for my kids. Finally, we threw in one little wrinkle. We put the two words together. <laughs> Healthcare. <laughs> hmm. Healthcare. Honestly, it's just confusing. The amount of paperwork or questionnaires that you have to fill out. Who's keeping all this paper? I definitely see them uh, a lot as a bureaucracy. It isn't health or care, it's a process. It's a mess. When you see health, it's happy, and when you see care, it's spectacular, but when you see health care, it's like run for your life. We heard people loud and clear. When it comes to health care, there's a gap, and our goal is to close it. Now, while I'm not bringing you anything from Humana, it's a great video. And it really shows what we do because we want to be that group that fixes that healthcare problem for you. Um, one thing that you guys didn't really have before is you had this great benefits guide. Guide you have great HR people here at the city of Alma that you can go ask questions of, and they're always very helpful to you. But what you didn't have was somebody that you could call all the time. One person that you could call all the time. What you had in your old benefits book on the back page, I should have brought up printout of it was a whole bunch of phone numbers of people that you could call, whether it's Blues, Guardian Dental, Guardian Insurance, Health Equity, okay? There's no list of phone numbers in this book, okay? There's only ours. Because what we do is we're the point of service for everything that you guys need regarding your employee benefits. When you call 44 North, someone's going to answer the phone, you're going to say you're from the city of Alma, and you're going to go to the same team who's going to help you all the time. You'll get to know these ladies, they're amazing. They make me look good all the time because um, they're, they're so good at, at what they do. Um, so we will run with whatever you're calling us about, whether it's a bill question, an explanation of benefits question, you're looking for a doctor, um, whatever it is. You know healthcare is complicated, you can call us, we'll run with your problem, we will ask Blues, we will ask Guardian, and then we will get back to you so that you can be an employee, a spouse, a mother, a father, whatever you do every day that you love much more than taking care of healthcare questions. Okay? <laughs> so if you wouldn't mind, open your book here. And I, um, I'm kind of a walk around person, so uh, we'll just go through it together. So that's a little bit about 44 North. Um, what 44 North means is we're, our headquarters is, we're based in Cadillac, so we're on the 44th parallel. That's where our name came from. Um, I live in Rockford. Um, we have an office in Rockford, Saginaw. Uh, Marquette, Spring Lake, Granville, Traverse City, um, so we're all over the state, okay? Um, but our main office is in Cadillac. We have about 100 employees that are working for you guys, okay? Um, so on the first page, you'll see your team. Now, you'll always work with the same people at 44 North, and I, I hope you all got a pen that I passed out, but I would like you to put a star next to Nikki Nichols' name, if you would, and she is your patient advocate. You're the patient in this relationship. So whenever you have a question about a bill, finding a doctor, you don't understand something, you don't know how something's going to get paid, what is this coinsurance and deductible stuff Anthony told me about, okay? You can call her and she'll work with you. Another person you'll talk to a lot is Char. Okay, she's my account manager. She's the best. Okay, actually Nikki's great too, but. Um, they know all the answers. They will run with your questions and answers. Um, the next page has our phone numbers on it. Another great benefit of 44 North is we, have, we work 24-7. There's always someone on call. So the only time you might not get someone from your team is in, at night or on the weekends if you call and it's an emergency. It rolls over to whoever is taking emergency calls that night or that weekend. Okay, this is a great benefit. We don't farm it out. We don't have a call center. It doesn't forward to an answering service. This is a 44 person who has a laptop and a cell phone just to answer your call. Okay? And this is because you only need prescriptions on Friday night, Saturday, Sunday that you can't get filled, or your kid needs certain, you know, a medical attention or, or something like that. That's when this all happens, right? And so you can call somebody. Don't ever feel bad calling. They love to help. 
Um, we have meetings once a month and they love to tell great stories about getting people out of jams. So um, use that number. Um, I'll give you a some, couple pieces of homework to, for tonight. Um, please take a picture of this page and star it in your photos album on your phone, but your favorites album so it's always there. Have your spouse, have your kids. Take a picture of this and keep it in your phone, okay? Speaking of that, how many spouses are here tonight? That's awesome. Thank you for coming. Um, so there's our phone number. Again, it's one number all the time, day or night, it rolls over for you. If you're an email person, there's our claims, questions, email on there. It isn't just for claims, questions, it's for everything. So you can call that. Um, if you get an email back from Shar or Nikki, you can just respond back to their, their own work email. So just correspond that way. All right, the next page, a few boring details I'll go through really quick. Um, your plan starts January 1st, which you guys know. Um, we'd like to have your enrollment forms by December 7th or before, please, if you could. I would like to throw out a goal of the end of November, if you could. Um, get those back into HR. Okay. Could you say that? Could you say that again, please? Yes, please get them in by the end of November if you can. Extra credit points for that. Um, <laughs> if she's got yeah. Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. I'm sorry. Hey, I was nicer than her. So Tuesday, you guys. Tuesday. Just like you have a few extra days to get it done this weekend, right? Okay. Um, so please get them in by Tuesday. Um, down below that is just a quick summary of the benefits you have: medical, dental, life insurance flexible spending, we're gonna come back to that in more detail as you go through the book. On um, the next page, employee eligibility, so what are, when are you eligible? Um, dependent eligibility, who's dependent, who's eligible, um, and then age requirements, okay? Um, up to age 26, they can be on your insurance. After that, they're off, okay? That's not us, the carriers, they're on it. They want them off, okay? So but up until age 26, they can be on. Same thing with dental and vision, slightly different. Some are 25, some are 26, some it's the month of your birthday, some it's the end of the year. They're all different, but that's generally the guideline, okay? Next page over is uh, qualifying events. So remember, this is, your, th this is the city's open enrollment period right now. This is your opportunity to make changes to your health plan, to enroll, to unenroll, to add people. Um, whatever you can do, this is called open enrollment. You don't get another open enrollment unless you have a life event. That would be a marriage, a divorce, adoption, new baby, loss of coverage through your spouse, okay? Change of coverage from your spouse. So there are other qualifying events, but you have to have one to make other changes. So this is your opportunity. Uh, make sure you don't miss it, okay? Um, also, if you have any questions, you can always ask Sheila, you can ask me, um, you can call Char, you can call Nikki. As you guys are making these decisions over the next few days, we'll be glad to help. Um, spouses are allowed to come on now, so you might want to compare your spouse's plan to the city of Elmont, okay? You might think your spouse's plan is better and you, she or he stays there, or you both go there, or your kids are there and you're here. It, it, and people always ask me, what should I do? You really have to sit with both benefit books side by side and decide, you know, okay, what's the deductible? What's the co-insurance? What's the employee contribution to the cost? Okay? And so it's pretty, it's a pretty tough to, if you don't have those two things side by side to make that decision. But we can help you, okay? We'll give you some tips and ideas. Um, but that list of qualifying events is listed there. There's some exceptions to this, but the number I want you to remember is 30 days. Some are longer, but forget that. 30 days, so if you have a baby, you have 30 days to call us, okay? And let us know if you had a baby. You can call us before you have a baby, and we'll put on a calendar as an alarm, and we'll add the baby. But you gotta let us know at some point so we can help you, okay? I just had one the other day. We had to do an exception. It took six weeks to get this baby onto the insurance. That was 65 days post-born. They wanted that on their insurance, okay? That could have been really bad if the baby was sick, but it, it wasn't, so they got lucky. All right. Um, special notice over there is, again, what I just said about the qualifying events. 
carriers are either really nice or really nasty. And you never really know until your situation is in front of them. So some, sometimes they're lenient, and sometimes they aren't. All right, next page is um, telemedicine or online care. Anybody ever use online visits or telemedicine for their health care? Okay, good experience? Absolutely. Yeah, this is me and my wife's favorite benefit that we have at 44 North. I don't know why anybody would ever want to go to their doctor for something simple. I mean, this is the way to go. No germ-infested waiting room, no taking a half a day off of work, no getting the kids out of school. We sat at our island four days ago, because my daughter, you know, of course, she showed us this rash she's got, and we said, how long have you had that? No, since summer, you know? <laughs> and we literally had, I'm sorry for the details, antifungal cream for free at Myers in 15 minutes, okay, from a phone call and a video chat, so he got to see the fungus on her leg. She probably got in a locker room at school, you know? But, I mean, do you know how much time that would have taken to go to a doctor and if you even can get an appointment, that's not a couple weeks out. I love my doctor, but I also love not going there, okay? So 90% of what you go to your doctor for as routine care, especially for kids, you can do online or on the phone or on the app or on your computer, okay? Um, if it's something visual, you want to use the app, don't call because then they want you to send pictures. So just do a, vis do a video chat and they'll say, okay, can I see that thing? And you show them. And, um, it's maybe awkward, but you're going to have to show them in the doctor's office anyway. So um, it's really cool. There's information there, especially on the second page with the lady. Um, it tells you mobile, web, or phone. Okay? I don't know about you, but I've got a kid that always gets an earache once a year. I got a kid that always gets strep throat once a year. I got a kid that's always got something that I know what we need a prescription for. I don't need to go to the doctor. I just want a prescription. Anthony, you know, tell them how many kids you have. I, I have eight kids, okay. so we do That's that. why. <laughs> so, so it's a little crazy, yeah. <laughs> we like to do things at the island. So, <laughs> all right. So um, please, though, again, another. this is your second piece of homework for the weekend. When you're watching the Lions on Thursday, okay, I want you and your wife to download the app to your phone because they'll probably, okay, they're going to win, but when they're winning, Okay, download the app, put, actually you won't be able to, I'm sorry, I lied, January, wait till January 1st. After January 1st, when you're doing something on the couch, download to your phone and get your whole family put in. Okay, it's just simple. What's your name? What's your birth date? Do you have any allergies? That's registration, basically. But if you don't get it done, when it's time to use the service, you'll say, uh, forget it. Okay, um, so get registered. Your wife and you, or your, the spouses have to have two separate accounts, so you'll have your own on your phone. Whoever provides the most care for your kids, put them on yours, on that person's. Does that make sense? Okay, so like my wife has the kids registered on her app, just because she does more of this stuff. All right, this is for everybody in your household, okay, and your kid at college. Okay, so get, have them get set up while they're, show them how to do it, download that. Any questions about that, online visits? It's called all different kinds of stuff. Online visits, telemedicine, teledoc. It all refers to the same thing, okay? Um, next thing, um, there's, we're gonna get into some ideas here um, about saving money, okay? Because healthcare is crazy, okay? And you know, the thing about healthcare is the days where you could just treat it like it was just an empty credit card or gone, okay? Now you can still do that because you guys have an amazing plan here. I mean, it's, it's awesome, okay? You can have a plan where you literally spend $1,000 a year almost, okay? And you're, that's a great plan. But if we all do that without any regard to being smart about it, the city's gonna get an increase, okay? It's just like your car. There's no such thing as car insurance. It's prepaid collision, okay? You, you get in a collision, they raise your rates. You use your health plan, they raise your rates, okay? Now that might not be fair, but it's the way that it is. Now, that's within a certain reason. So what I'm saying to you guys is, I just want you to think about your health care like you think about buying everything else that you buy. We go onto Amazon and we spend hours putting things in our cart and 
looking at reviews and sorting through and you know all this kind of stuff. But when it comes to healthcare, we don't even think about it. We just do. And we do what someone tells us to. And we don't really think about it after that. Okay. Um, we get a prescription and we just go to where we've always gone without any regard to that being the most expensive place in town. Okay. Um, your doctor says, you know, you've hurt your knee, you need an MRI. So you go where he tells you to, because doctors are always right, right? But you know, there's an imaging center right next door to the hospital that costs half as much, and it's the same doctors. And it's a lot easier to walk into a building that's not a hospital and find a parking spot. So that's the kind of stuff I want you guys to think about, we're gonna talk about now. So for example, I go to groups all the time and do meetings like this, and they might have a, a $20 copay for a drug, okay? And they, someone once said to me, well, what do I care because that drug only cost my group $20. I said, well, no, your copay for that drug is $20. The group still pays the real price for that drug, okay? So there's a drug called Humira. A lot of people are on Humira. You probably see commercials for it. Um, it costs $10,000 a month, okay? It's for arthritis, psoriasis, several different things. The drug companies keep finding reasons for people to take it because it costs $10,000 a month. Okay, your deductive, your copay for that drug is $100 a month here, the city. You're thinking, man, that's a lot of money. Okay, but you go get it filled, right, 100 bucks. The city just paid $9,900 on their medical plan for a drug. That if you would have called Char or Nikki at 44 North, we probably could have got for you for $50 or for free. Okay? You guys know at the end of all the commercials for drugs, they talk about, you know, AstraZeneca, or if you can't afford your drugs, AstraZeneca may be able to help. There's all these programs out there for people, for these crazy drugs, that you get discounts. And we can help you get those. Okay? So it all depends on how much money you make, how big your family is, all that kind of stuff. But you know what, it's worth a try because it's, it's not very hard to have happen. In fact, 44 North, um, we went self-funded on our medical plan and we excluded certain drugs, which means we do not cover them. But for the people that were on these drugs, we got all of them qualified and they all went from spending our $250 a month deductible that we used to have for those drugs, now they get them for free, both of them. So that was the best exclusion of a drug they ever had, okay? <laughs> Where at first you might think, I'd be mad if my group excluded a drug. But it was all a strategy, okay? So that brings me back to the point of where we were in the book, which is um, where we all can be <coughs> consumers of our health care instead of users. So for example, when you guys are watching TV someday, sporting event, your favorite show, Dancing with the Stars, whatever it is. I want you to download this GoodRx app anyways. I want all of you to do it. And every time there's a drug commercial, I want you to type in the drugs. It's a fun game because you will not believe how expensive drugs are. If they're on TV, they're at least $1,000. And they're probably over $5,000 for one fill. Okay, that's why they have these commercials because we all run out to our doctor and we say, we want things that cost $2,000 or $5,000 instead of generic drugs that cost 10. Okay? So GoodRx allows you to look up drugs that you already take or when you get a new prescription and find out where in town is the least expensive place to fill that. You will not believe the difference. You would think, why in the world would it be different? Okay? Um, Lipitor is the highest prescribed cholesterol drug in the United States. It's $115 at Rite Aid and Walgreens. Okay? You can get that drug at Costco for $17, okay? This will tell you stuff like that. Now, again, you can just say, you know what, I don't care. My, my, my co pays 20 bucks. What do I care if the city pays $150 or my copay covers the whole cost of that, okay? And you know what, it doesn't really matter right now, but it will matter next October when you get a renewal. Because what's gonna happen is, every year the city gets a report from Blues and it has an increase on it. And the city has to decide, are we going to trim the benefits or increase the cost share? That's what happens. 
okay? And I'm telling you this because I want to be helpful. And I want your benefits to stay the same because it's my job to help this not happen all year long. So yes, it doesn't really, you don't have to do this. But if you would, it helps every single person in this room have these benefits for longer, okay? Um, the next page over is a free drug list um, around town. So I don't know if you know this, but most of the drugs people get prescribed for just general everyday things are here on this free list, okay? Now you might have to go to Family Fair or Meyer. Um, I don't know if you guys get Family Fair here. Okay, Meyer, Sam's Club. Um, I'm also, you're gonna get an email from me forwarded through the city um, that has another attachment that is the discount drug list. It's, as, it's bigger than this book, so I couldn't print it for all of you. Um, but it's, for example, Walmart has a $4 and $10 drug list, okay? You just walk in, it's cheaper than your copay to go to Walmart and get certain drugs, okay? So all I'm saying is, if you go to a pharmacy and you get a prescription filled, they have to charge you your copay. If your copay is $10 or $20 or $40 or $60, ask them what's the cash price for that drug. They're not allowed to tell you unless you're asked. Okay? And they will tell you what the cash price is. It might be less than your copay. But they can't tell you that. Okay? Unless you ask. So always ask. They'll gladly charge you your copay for your prescription, okay? But I'd rather go to Walmart and get it for four dollars, or Meyer and get it for free, okay? Any questions about that? Um, this is another great thing to take a picture of and keep on your phone, so that when you're on the phone with your doctor in their office, you can remind them of, you know, where they know the free, and they know, they do know, okay? Um, but look through the list. See if those are any things that you're already taking, especially diabetes or the cholesterol drugs, okay, that are already free. Um, the next page is just how to register at Blue Cross Blue Shield. This is a great tool. Um, I mostly would just use the mobile side, um, and it will help you keep track of your deductibles, your co-insurance, where you are with all those things throughout the year, your co-pays. It just is a great way to keep in touch. Find providers, okay? And there's a computer, if you'd rather do it on, on the computer as well. Next page, flexible spending account. So a flexible spending account has two parts. One is for medical expenses that you know you're gonna have. So if you sit down over the next couple days and you write down all the money that you're gonna spend outside of your health plan, so glasses, dentist, um, co-pay, you know, anything that you're gonna spend money on that you're, isn't covered by your medical plan, you can put in a flex plan and then you can get reimbursed out of that, okay? Throughout the year. Now a flex plan is use it or lose it, so don't put too much in, only put what you know you're gonna use. You can carry over $500 at the end of the year, okay? Here's a little worksheet that you can use over on the next page. Flex is also for dependent care. So if you have kids in daycare or preschool, you can now put that money away pre-tax, so you save a little bit of money, okay, when you're paying for the depend, for your um, dependent care. Did someone say preschool? Did I hear some call? So yes, it does work for preschool, not kindergarten, but before that. Um, any questions about flex? And you need to pay preschool, not necessarily. What do you say? You need to pay preschool. Paid preschool, yeah. Yeah, like, like at our church, we have preschool. It's like $1,000 a year. So I flex that for my kids when they're in it. What's the max? The max for, um, it's listed right there. 5000 for dependent care. Good question. And 2700 for medical. Okay, but remember, use it or lose it. It goes away. We don't want the government to have any more money. Okay. Um, next is a life and life A, B, and B and voluntary supplemental life plans. Um, so you guys have several options you can choose from each year. Um, everybody gets life and um, accidental death and dismemberment from the city. Um, it's one times your salary, or one. I'm sorry. Yeah, one times your salary. That's okay. Full time. What do you say? That's full time people. Full time people. Okay. Um, for life, it's, so it's the same for life and accidental death, okay? 
So if you die, you're going to get your life payment. If you die in an accident, you're going to get both. Okay? So I always tell my wife, make sure it was an accident. <laughs> okay? um, the the um, next one is voluntary life. So um, if you want to add more to your life insurance, you can add that here in the city. It's very cheap to do it here. And if you're a smoker, a chewer, or there's another disqualifying reason, you can add a certain amount without a medical exam. So this is your chance to do that, okay? If you're new to it, okay? If you're not new, then you could have an exam, okay? If you've already had an open enrollment with Guardian. But it's still easier to get, okay? Um, you can add insurance for your spouse with the spousal voluntary life, and you can add it for your children. Now there's limits listed there, but this is so cheap, you guys, I think I have 10,000 on each of my kids, it's, I think it's eight cents a kid of pay. So, you know, I'll, that's pretty inexpensive. Um, after that, it's just a whole bunch of the details on the coverage and benefits that don't, you know, so that you get, it expands more. Okay, so we'll skip all that. There, it, there are benefits for part-time employees as well, so you can have, and I, they're not in the book. Any part-time people here? No, okay. So there are part-time, um, which I can get. I will send, she'll have. All right, next next area is medical. Actually, I think I, I skipped dental. Did I skip dental? I did. Um, page 21 is dental. So you guys have Guardian Dental. Um, and there's your coverages there. Um, you have no deductible, which is great. Most dental plans have a deductible per year. Um, you have $1,000 max per person per year, which is very normal. Um, your preventative care is covered at 100%, so exams, cleanings, your, your uh, um, you know, the twice a year things that you should automatically go get done, okay, are at, covered at 100%. It's not gonna cost you one penny. So please go there twice a year. Because when you don't, it's gonna cost you 50% of the cost to have that regret that you should have got your teeth cleaned, okay? Um, so please go get your teeth cleaned twice a year. Take your kids. You would not believe how many people do not use their annual two cleanings. But we're talking people that make good money and have great jobs, they don't go to the dentist, I don't understand, okay? I love the dentist, actually. So my wife thinks I'm crazy, but I do. Maybe it's just quiet for an hour. <laughs> um, and then major, so crowns, extractions, bridges, things like that come at 50%. But you only get $1,000 a year. So what are you gonna pair with your dental plan if you know you need something big like that? Flex spending, yep, okay. And then you can plan it for the beginning of the year and, and have it all done and ready to go. Um, cost share, so there's no cost for dental, it's including your medical, okay? So no separate policy for that. Um, there's instructions on where to find a guardian dentist down there. Um, I don't think so for this. I don't remember that. I don't remember looking that up. She asked about waiting periods. No, there's not to this group. No. Thank you. Okay. There's not to this group. So, okay. All right. Medical is next. Okay, now um, one other quick little thing back on dental, and I don't know if this applies to you guys, um, but there is no ortho, can they do ortho through you? Okay, so if you guys have kids that need braces, you need them, okay? Because dental plan orthodontic coverage is terrible anyways, okay? Um, but they'll talk about that with you guys, because you can supplement. Also the 50%, so can they supplement the 50%? Minor, okay, cool, thank you. So jump in with that song. Um, anyway, then all the, all the details after the dental plan. Okay, medical. So you guys have two plans here that you can choose from for your medical. Um, I would call what I would call a base plan and then one that you contribute to. Um, the first plan is, I'm gonna go through these really quick. Is anybody not on the medical plans right now? Okay. Few people, so I'll go through them. Um, so forgive me if I go into a, lot, a few extra details here, but I just want to make sure. Um, so the first plan, which I would call your base plan, um, has a four thousand dollars single employee deductible, 
or an $8,000 family deductible, okay? So that is what I call your first bucket of your medical plan. So every time you go to your doctor or the emergency room or a hospitalization or anything like that, first you might have a copay, that's the little bit to see your doctor or the specialist or the chiropractor, but then everything after that goes towards your deductible. So you've got this bucket called a deductible, okay? When that deductible bucket is full, then it goes over to your um, coinsurance. That's your next bucket. Okay, so that plan has a coinsurance of 30%. So after you go, after you hit 4,000, if you do, hopefully you don't, okay, then you're gonna pay 30% of everything else that happens to you for the year. Okay. Now, if you, if you go down a little bit, that 30% is going to go until you get to your out-of-pocket max for the year, which for a single is towards the bottom. It's $63.50. So you already hit $4,000 on your deductible, right? So that leaves you $2,350 in coinsurance. <coughs> that's your, so that's your second bucket. If you hit your out-of-pocket max, which hopefully none of you do this year, okay, then you're done. Okay, now if you're a family, it's a little scarier than that because it's $8,000 for your deductible and then your coinsurance on top of that, okay, which stops at $12,700. It would be really hard to get to that, okay? So now this is where, if you're on this plan, this is where you're really going to want to hear what they have to say. Um, so I have had accident insurance through AFLAC for a long time. I've never used it, ever. Okay. This year we went on spring break. Five hours after we got there, my son fell off the top of a slide to the ground, broke his humerus off his elbow. Okay. So we went from being in the pool, him playing in the playground, to going to our first emergency room in New Smyrna Beach, Florida where they said, this is way out of our scope. We're gonna send you to another ambulance or another children's hospital an hour and a half away in a monitored ambulance ride. So my whole time, I'm just thinking how much this is costing me. We're going to another emergency room <laughs> an hour and a half away in a monitored ambulance ride. So anyway, it was great, you know, spring break in Florida, first night at Walt Disney Children's Hospital. Surgery in the morning, rubber, covering over his cast for a week. It was actually pretty cool and it's great memories now. But why I'm sharing that with you is because I get back to work and I'm kind of lamenting these bills because we're gonna make our out-of-pocket max probably for the year. And someone leans over me at work and goes, didn't you buy the Aflac accident plan? And I completely forgot that I did. It's the best $14 a pay I've ever spent in my life. I don't know how much it is for a year, but um, I got I got about $4,700 back for my son's broken arm, which went a long way in covering my, uh, my $8,000 um, deductible on my health plan at 44 North. Now we get a little bit of HRA contribution, but that's a lot of money. It was an expensive spring break. Okay? So that was their great adventure on spring break. Well, then come summer, my daughter goes camping with a friend and they're tubing and we're an hour and a half away at our house and the parents call and they tell us that our daughter fell off the tube and got kicked in the nose and they think her nose is broken and then when we saw the picture we know why it was broken because it was sideways. Okay. So in about two months we had two claims, two emergency rooms, two surgeries, um, it was lots of fun and Aflac saved the day. I'm just saying. So that's the kind of thing that you guys have to think about when you have a plan like this, where what would happen in your house if you had a summer like that? What, could you afford, as a family, an $8,000 deductible? Okay? Um, I mean, we don't do too bad, but we were in trouble. Okay? I mean, it wasn't trouble, but it was painful. Really painful. Okay? So, and... But that's the kind of stuff that they're going to talk to you about. So keeping going down that list, I'm sorry, I kind of got off track there. Um, what you have next after your um, co-insurance, you've got your co-pays. 
So you're gonna pay $40 to go see your doctor or to use the telemedicine. Okay, I actually heard that Blues is thinking of doing some free telemedicine or online visits. I'll let you know that via email or communication if that happens for January 1. They don't like to tell us anything until it happens. Um, $60 to see a specialist, $60 to go to urgent care, and $250 to go to an emergency room. Now if you get admitted, they waive that, that copay, okay? But does anybody know how much it costs just to walk through the doors of an emergency room before the doctor even sees you? Okay, how much? Uh, it's like 1500 or something. Yeah, it's, a, it's over 1000 yeah. <coughs> That's before they do anything to you. So again, this goes back to the example with the drugs where we all have to work together, okay? Because if you go to the emergency room and you think, ah, oh, $250, that's kind of bad, but not too bad, I'm really sick, I really need to go, okay? And if you need to go to the emergency room, you have to go to the emergency room, okay, if it's an emergency. What I'm saying is, if you should have went to the doctor on Wednesday, but you didn't go till Friday night, and now you're at the emergency room, okay, that's, that hurts, okay? Um, go to urgent care first, see what they say. Call Teladoc first and see what they say. Um, but if you're having an emergency, go to the emergency room. Um, because again, it might only cost you $250 on your deductible, or I'm sorry, your copay, but the city just spent $1,000 for you to go to the emergency room, at least. And that's, that's just started. You haven't seen a doctor yet. You haven't had a barrage of tests yet. Okay? So it's at least going to be a $2,500 to $3,000 trip every time you go to the emergency room on your medical plan. Okay? It will cost about a quarter of that at an urgent care, if that. Okay? It only costs you 60 bucks. Yeah. Um, prescription drugs. Okay, so if you go to the pharmacy um, and you need, we made a change to the prescription drug plan this year because you guys had a prescription drug plan that if you're on a drug of any substance and cost, it was really high. Okay, your largest deductible or copay for drugs last year, you had two of them. You had a five tier plan. Your highest cost was $250. The next one down was $150. Okay? Um, this year we changed that where the highest drug cost that you could possibly have is a minimum of 80 and a maximum of 100. So that's really going to help some people here. Okay, now again, please shop around a little bit, but that was a nice change for some of you. Um, we also went to a three tier drug card, which makes it much simpler for you to understand what you're possibly going to pay. Okay? Most drugs in the United States can be found for under $10, okay? Most. When you see the list that I'm gonna send you, it is most drugs in America are under $10, okay? If it's not on that list where you can get it for $4 at Walmart or free at Meyer and Sam's Club, okay, then it's gonna be $20 at the pharmacy. If you wanna turn in a receipt to 44 North for everything under 20, you can send it in your receipt, and we'll send you back, okay, everything that it costs above $10, okay? So that's a little bonus, but if you want to do that, okay? Um, we wanted to try to cover everybody, so if you go to your pharmacy right now, a generic, okay, is gonna be $20 if it's not cheaper. I'm telling you, it's probably gonna be cheaper. Ask for the cash price, okay? Any questions about pharmacy? If, I got a quick question. Yeah. If we have an SS, uh, you know, a flexible spending, and we act, can we pay that, that cash price with that? Yes, definitely. So, did everybody hear what he asked about the flex plan? Can you pay the cash price? All medical, dental, vision expenses, you can use your flex card, your flex account. Yep. Um, after that, um, and there's some other details there, um, there's no cost share for this plan for, to you. So there's absolutely no cost for you to be on this plan from the city. Okay. The next plan is what's called a health reimbursement arrangement. This one you're going to contribute some of your own money to because it is a better plan, has better coverage. So how this works is, um, the city buys a plan that is more, that is higher deductible, but
But if you remember health equity, they reimburse, the city reimburses it back down to more manageable amount for you guys, okay? So you guys are leaving and moving away from health equity and moving to 44 North who's gonna manage this for you. The nice thing about it is you don't have to call health equity about one question and then call blues about another question and guardian about your dental. Every time you ever call, you can ask 44 North any of these questions about your HRA and your medical at the same time. Because usually they're connected, okay? Um, so, the, how this plan works is, if you're a single, it's a $500 deductible, and if you're a family, it's a $1,000 deductible. There's a 20% co-insurance after that, okay? And then same co-pays to see your doctor, the specialist, the chiropractor, okay? Um, same prescription coverage, very similar out-of-pocket max. Okay, and then down there are the cost shares for that plan for a single, a couple, and a family. Now, one thing that might be confusing to you is, for example, when you use the Blue Cross app on your phone and you're on this plan, it's gonna show you, unfortunately, that you have a $5,000 deductible or a $10,000 deductible because they don't know what we're doing, okay? You just have to remember that you're only spending 500 and 1,000. Just quick in your head, don't even look at those first numbers, only look at the 500 or the 1,000, okay? Because that's what's gonna impact you. 40 North goes all the rest in the background. Another quick little note is when you go to the doctor, the process is gonna be, when you get medical services, they're gonna bill the insurance. And this, depending on how fast this happens, you might get an explanation of benefits at home that says you owe money, okay? Don't ever panic, just set it in a little pile until you get the one from 44 North. Is that me? No, you're good, no. it's okay. all right. <laughs> um, until you get the one from 44 North that fixed it, okay? So I see some people shaking their head because you know this. What I'm gonna tell you is it's gonna be a little bit smoother because of our closer relationship than health equity out in Utah being so gigantic, we're in your backyard. Okay, and you know us, so it will be much better. Um, to find a doctor down here, okay, is the instructions. Um, this is a PPO network, which means it's very big. It's not a managed network. There's no out of network, okay? Any questions about medical? Um, after that, it's just a whole bunch of details on each of the plans, okay? The 4,000, 8,000 plan is listed first followed by the pharmacy for that, and then after that is the HRA plan in the back. Any questions at all? Yeah. Do you get the 44 North card separate? Yes. Yes. So when you go to the doctor, you're, it's a good question. Chance if you're going to get a 44 North HRA card, the answer is yes. They'll be mailed to you, and you just show both and the doctors will know what to do with it. But where you have to be patient, and where new people aren't understanding this with the HRA is, sometimes the, the bill gets